Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof should start the defense against Aston Villa. Lissandro Martinez needs to be rested for our upcoming game against Villa. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the MU stand. King Gamer here. This is your preview for Manchester United versus Aston Villa. Of course, we are preparing for a second showdown with Aston Villa. In a short space of time, uh, Eric Ten Hag takes charge of a domestic cup fixture for the first time. The Reds welcome Aston Villa to Old Trafford in the Carabao Cup game, a third round game. Hoping to set up a pre-Christmas date in the next stage by knocking Una Emery's team out and going some way to avenging a Sunday's Premier League defeat at Villa Park. It remains uh, to be seen how many changes the boss will make to his lineup, even though the competition has sometimes been used to allow more game time for squad players and youngsters. Uh, Bruno Fernandes is available again after suspension. Diego Dalot can also play even though he is banned for Sunday's game at Fulham. The last match before the World Cup break. So I think um, Dalot has five yellow cards now. So he will not be available for the Fulham game. So Eric Ten Hag might decide to play him against uh, Aston Villa in this Carabao Cup match on Thursday. Um, Obviously, we hope to get an update on uh, from Ten Hag on Anthony and Jaden Sancho, but we know Rafael Varane is out due to injuries. Uh, Anthony Martial made his return to action as a second half substitute on Sunday, while right back Aaron, uh, Aaron Wambasaka is training with the main group, so he could be available for selection uh, against Aston Villa. The, the pictures from Carrington actually showed young forward uh, short tier might be available for selection as well. Uh, he's working with the squad. He was among the, the substitutes in the last two pictures against Real Sociedad and Villa. Uh, let's just quickly talk about Aston Villa's team news before I show you guys my starting 11 that I'm, I'm picking for this team. And I think maybe Eric Ten Hag would go with this starting 11 as well. But Aston Villa teams, uh, uh, Villa's team news and new boss Una Emery actually may decide to shuffle his pack in order to take a look at more players and action with ex player Ashley Young. One option to come in from the start Diego Carlos and Phillips Coutinho are ruled out through injuries, while uh, Leno Bailey left the field at Villa Park complaining of some pain in the rib area. So these players might not be available for Villa. But let's take a look at my starting 11 here. This is the preferred lineup that I am going with. Of course, David De Gea starts and go. At right back, I am picking Erwan Basaka instead of Dalot. I know Dalot is suspended for the game, for the Fulham game, but I think we might have to give some minutes for Aaron Wan-Bissaka because I don't want Wan-Bissaka to just be playing his first match in the Premier League against Fulham. That Fulham game is a massive game. We have to win that game. So we have to be concerned about that game. So I think we need to give him some minutes into this match and maybe take him off around 60, 70 minutes and put Dalot in. But as far as I'm concerned, I think Wan-Bissaka needs to start at right back so this is by the way this is the starting 11 that has played previously so let me just put Wambasaka in here Wambasaka of course hasn't played a lot of minutes to be honest with you he hasn't played a lot of minutes under Ten Hag uh, some say that it's because of injuries. Some say that uh, the Ten Hag doesn't actually fancy him. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't think he has a lot of future in this team. So I think 
<clears throat> this is the, the game that he has to play. If he doesn't play the, uh, against Aston Villa, I think his career at Manchester United is finished. Uh, Lindelof and Martinez played before, so I'm going to go with Maguire here. So I think Maguire and... Um, I think Maguire and Lindelof should play this match because Martinez needs to be rested. He played a lot of games. He played a lot of games, so we could see Maguire playing with Lindelof in that back four. So this is what the back four should look like, in my opinion. And Luke Shaw as well needs to be rested. I put Malasia here, so the back four pretty much is Malasia. Victor Lindelof, Harry Maguire, and Juan Basaka. That is the back four I'm going with. Of course, David De Gea starts and go. Uh, you might say, why not give a chance to Dabravka? But I don't think you want to make a lot of changes. I don't think you want to be making lots of changes in the starting 11. It's not like David De Gea is running uh, 100 miles per hour every game. He's not doing that. He's not really doing much he's a goalkeeper i don't think he needs that much rest anyway so i think he should he should continue to be selected that might be good for him as well after conceding three goals uh, uh to play in this match and probably maybe keep a clean sheet and get your confidence back but this is the back four that i am selecting but what do you guys think do you agree with this back four or you disagree with the back four let me know in the comment sections uh, just let me know who you think should start with Victor Lindelof or Harry Maguire. Uh, let's move on to the middle of the park. In midfield, Casemiro, I think, needs to be rested, in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to bring in Fred here. So Fred will start with Zidane. I think um, we might not see this. We might not see this in a sense that he might go with McTominay, but I don't want to see that. Like, I want to see something different. This is the Carabao Cup that we have to make changes. We have to make changes to the starting 11. We want to see these these youngsters uh, get a chance to play. And we haven't, uh, we haven't seen Zidane uh, play uh, from the start for Manchester United this season. So I think this is a big opportunity for him to start and I would definitely start him. I would definitely start him. I just, I just forgot to eat. I'll definitely start him with Fred. I think this could be a very nice midfield because just because I don't want to see McTominay and Fred. I'm okay with seeing uh, McTominay and Zidane play together, but please, Eric Ten Hag, don't pick Fred and McTominay. I, I'm, I'm really tired of watching those two play in the middle of the park. It's just so static and no creativity whatsoever. So I think that needs to be changed. So this is the middle, uh, the midfield that I'm going with. Uh, that means Ericsson and Casemiro will be rested for this game. We need them. We need them against Fulham. So they should be rested. So you're looking at Zidane and Fred matching up on my left here or, or my uh, uh, over here. Um, Let's move on. Let's move on to the forward area. Anthony, I think I'm going to put him on the bench, Anthony. And I'm going to start Sancho here. Or maybe, I think I think we should definitely go with Sancho. If he's fit, I think we should go with Sancho. I put him there as well. You can see it. I think Sancho was injured. And we might get an update from Eric Ten Hag if he's going to be fit. For this game but if he is i think he needs some minutes and i'm definitely going to try to play him on right hand side instead of on the left because on the left i'm planning to use garnacho again so rashford should take a seat i mean i'm not dropping rashford here let's be clear i'm just resting some of the players we have because we need them for the fulham game so and then where's Garnacho? Garnacho. Thought I had him here. So. So Garnacho starts for me on the left. He should be on the left. Sancho on the right. These two are my wingers. 
Of course, Bruno Fernandes was suspended uh, for the game against Aston Villa. He should come back in and probably play uh, 50 or 60 minutes and take him off and put Donny in or something. But I think he needs to play in this game to get that rhythm, play half an hour, take him off, and he should be fresh for the Fulham game as well. So this could be, this This should be the lineup, I think. Sancho, Bruno, and Garnacho should be the lineup. Up front, I am going to drop Cristiano, uh, and I'm going to bring in Anthony Martial. So Martial should start this game, in my opinion. I think he needs minutes. He hasn't played a lot of minutes. We've seen, we've seen him come in, uh, in the second half against Aston Villa. Was he impactful? Did he change anything in that game? I don't think he did. But again, it's been a while since he played and he's coming back from a long injury now. So I think, I think we should bring him in and start him in this game and give him some minutes to play. I mean, he needs to play. Uh, he needs to get into a match rhythm, in my opinion. So I think this is a perfect game to start Anthony Martial from the uh, from the start. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, so Ilanga is another option. So we've seen Ilanga uh, um, short here train. Are they going to get minutes in this match? I hope not. I hope not because I know Ilanga doesn't have the quality to play for Manchester United. I think he's a he's a championship player. I'm not trying to disrespect Ilanga here, but I'm just trying to tell you that the quality he brings to the team is just not there, in my opinion. So I think we definitely need to take a look at that right-hand side position or left-hand side as well. We need, a, we need a backup. Like we've seen against Villa when we lost 3-1. We played the same team that played... Uh, against Real Sociedad and because of that the team suffered because the team couldn't cope with the intensity of the game and in this game we cannot make the same mistake we cannot start Casemiro or Eriksson uh, uh, and Martinez, Shaw, Dalot we don't want to go with our strongest 11 in this game because they're gonna suffer again against Fulham we need to play Fulham before the World Cup starts. So that's the only game left. So we need to make sure we win against Fala. So I, I'm willing to risk the Carabao Cup here in order to win that Premier League game against Fala, because that is key. That is key for us finishing in the top four. So this is the lineup I'm gonna go with in this Carabao Cup, whether we lose or not, it really, really doesn't matter if we win as good because we advance to the next round and we can continue to play more youngsters in our lineups but if we lose it it's not something i'm gonna get uh, you know i'm gonna get really pissed at because it's not an important trophy and everybody knows it now people are treating the, the carabao cup as the uh an experiment uh, competition especially until you get to like the semi-finals or the quarterfinals that's what you should be doing. So this is my lineup. Like I said, this is the lineup I am going with. I'm gonna quickly show you guys um, the head to head. So this is it. Before I give you my prediction, this is the last five games from uh, Aston Villa and Manchester United. Aston Villa, of course, beating us 3-1. Really, to take a look at the previous four games they played, I don't think it matters really for Aston Villa because they had a different coach. Now it's a completely different coach at this moment in time. So I don't think it matters, but let's just take a look at it. So five games they played, they lost three games, one, two, the last one they won against us. We've been pretty decent until that loss against Aston Villa going into this game. Oh. Uh, Head to head, so head to head, we lost uh, like two days ago against them 3 1. But before that, we've drawn 2 2 a couple of times and we've won at Old Trafford 1 0. So it's been a close game against Aston Villa in the past five matches. So 
It's, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. But my prediction for this game, let me give you my prediction for this game. So I think this game is going to finish Manchester United 1, Aston Villa 1, and United are going to win this game on penalties. Yes, that is my prediction. Uh, Villa can certainly take a huge confidence from Sunday's result. Uh, United, of course, defensive. Uh, defensively, we looked weak in that game. We looked very weak in that game and Villa should be confident going into this game against us. But with changes expected on both ends, I would not be surprised to see a score draw come to the end of 90 minutes and Villa could well be suffering a second successive uh, penalty shootout exit in the Carabao Cup as Ten Hag sides advanced to round four. So that's what I think is going to happen. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about the lineup and also what is your score prediction for this game. Let me know down uh, in the comment section. But thanks for watching again, guys. Uh, don't forget to smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And I'm out. Peace.